Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter, we're going to bring you some big, big, breaking Black Mafia family news. Um, for the for the first time in a decade, we have a BMF case um, that involves the number two overall uh, from the organization, from its founding, Chad J. Bo Brown, the underboss of the Black Mafia family, has been out of prison on the original uh Black Mafia family bust. Uh, he did 11 years. He's been out for about six years and he might be going back to prison. Um, last week, he was the headlining defendant in a big uh, fraud and narcotics case that came out of federal court in St. Louis. 35 people were indicted. Now, let's be very clear. J. Bo uh, was not indicted on any drug counts, even though he's the number one defendant in the case. He he has been indicted on bank fraud as well as um, IRS fraud related to false paperwork that he filed trying to get a PPP loan. But I can't overestimate um, what a big deal this is in the world of Black Mafia family, in the world of the American narcotics trade, BMF uh you know, was the pinnacle, uh, the biggest urban narcotics organization in American history. Um, the whole group was dismantled in 2005 via the Operation Motor City Mafia bust, took down over 100 BMF members, including all of the leaders. Uh, for, for those that might not know, BMF started in Detroit in 1990, and then by the dawning of the new millennium had expanded um, around the country, they were the biggest wholesale narcotics, biggest wholesale cocaine uh, distributors in America uh, from the late 90s until the bus in 2005. They had established satellite crews in two dozen major cities. Their hubs were Detroit, Atlanta, L.A., and St. Louis. And J. Bo was the founding member of the St. Louis group. He knew the Flannery brothers who were Detroiters from a very early age and uh, Detroit and St. Louis kind of came together to birth what became Black Mafia family. And, uh, you know, J. Bo, other than Big Meech uh, and his brother Southwest T, it doesn't get more high profile in the world of BMF than Chad Brown, a.k.a. J. Bo. Uh, J. Bo stands for Junior Boss. Uh, he was the number two in charge. He ran the organization on a daily basis. Uh, all the logistics all of the go-betweens for, for Meech and his lieutenants, for Terry and his lieutenants were all going through J-Bo. Uh, young Jeezy, who, you know, kind of invented the uh, the trap rap scene inspired by BMF, uh, was allegedly a part of BMF, uh, has a song that came out about eight years ago called J-Bo, <laughs> with the uh, the, the the chorus being uh, ball like Jabo. I like to ball like Jabo. So, you know, he's somebody that's firmly uh, entrenched in pop culture. And I said, it's been out for about six years. And then this case just came down. And uh, it, I think it speaks to the fact that even though BMF as the fully vertically, vertically integrated group, uh, this monolith of a, of a drug organization, even though, the roof caved in in 2005. Over the last 18 years, you have remnants of BMF uh, that still exist. Uh, and, and a lot of those remnants um, are from the major original BMF hubs. So here in Detroit, in Atlanta, and then in, in um, J. Bo's neck of the woods in St. Louis. And the last BMF bus came down in around 2014, I believe, and was a St. Louis um cell or you know subunit of BMF that was uh, that had a had averted arrest in the 2005 bust and continued uh, on in, in their drug trafficking activities in coordination it looks like with with Big Meech in prison um that's come out in the last uh you know 6 months so big news uh in terms of the criminal justice system and the black mafia family uh some smaller news related to BMF uh, you had the release of 
one of the final members of BMF that still locked up in the Operation Motor City Mafia bus case that came down in the fall of 05, Paul P.J. Buford. He was recently released uh, from prison after 15 years. He was Southwest T's right-hand man, top lieutenant out in L.A. Uh, in the latter stages of that BMF, BMF reign. But, you know, kind of came on the scene, we're talking about P.J. Buford, as the head of security for Bad Boy Records uh, and a personal bodyguard to Puffy Combs, P. Diddy, Sean uh, P. Diddy Combs. Uh, we've talked here on the OG pod, we've talked to uh, a number of law enforcement that have confirmed to us that they were being told by informants that Black Mafia family gave Puffy Combs the seed money or some of the seed money to start Bad Boy Records. Um, the iconic Bad Boy Records, Biggie Smalls, Mace, Faith Evans, uh, 112, et cetera. So, um, Paul Buford was right in the middle of that. And then one of Puffy's first cousins, uh, Papa D, Daryl Taylor, was a lieutenant in, in BMF as well. So two people directly connected to Puffy and Bad Boy Records were in the Black Mafia family. P.J. Buford is out of prison now. Uh, and the only two people from that original BMF bus that are still there uh, are Big Meech, who has an outdate of 2028. And then the number three in charge, Fleming Ill Daniels, who's doing a second degree murder case in state prison uh, out of Georgia. And then um, last bit of news to report, um, uh, some, some sad news, uh, RIP to Slick Rick McFarlane. He was a JV member of Black Mafia family, uh, a group of kind of teenagers, guys in their early 20s that were um, gophers and protégés of the kind of the OG BMF, uh, Big Meats, Terry, j et, et cetera. Uh, Slick Rick McFarlane uh, went down in the Operation Motor City Mafia bust. He was a young guy at that time. I think he was only about 22, 23, as opposed to the OG guys that were in their mid-30s. Uh, he did about 10 years in prison, came out in 16, and only a couple of weeks after Slick Rick McFarlane came out of prison, he was murdered in a December 2016 drug world homicide that really had nothing to do with him. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. One of his close friends, Robert Eddins, who was a former NFL player, played for the Buffalo Bills, came from Detroit, a high school ball at Detroit Crockett, was an all uh, Midwestern Athletic Conference defensive end at Ball State then played with the Buffalo Bills after he had a cup of coffee in the NFL, came back to Detroit and, and jumped into the drug game, screwed over one of his uh, connects, didn't pay a $250,000 debt, and his partner and his supply source from, from down south came up uh, to Detroit and murdered him. Slick Rick was just visiting Robert Eddins at the time um, and, and got caught in the crossfire. Michael Griffin and Mariano Garcia, who are the uh, culprits who murdered Slick Rick McFarlane, were recently sentenced, just in the last couple of weeks, sentenced to prison. Uh, Griffin's going to do 30 years. Garcia's going to do 25. They both pleaded guilty to the case, but they had no idea that Slick Rick McFarlane was a, a Flannery Brothers lieutenant or had any ties to Black Mafia family. And that's really one of two uh, murders of, of BMF lieutenants that have happened over the last you know, five, six years that had nothing to do with BMF affairs, which makes sense because BMF was not a very violent group, but Slick Rick McFarlane and then uh, one of the OG BMF, uh, Christopher Pig Triplet, uh, was murdered and kind of in a, from what I understand, a beef over a woman uh, a couple of years ago. So RIP Pig, RIP uh, Slick Rick, Slick Rick's uh, murders are going to be going to prison for the foreseeable future. PJ Buford is out of prison. Uh, in a halfway house out in Long Beach, California. And then uh, J. Bo Brown, back in the headlines, under arrest again, under indictment for the uh, from the feds. We'll, we'll see what happens over these next couple of months. Uh, we'll, we'll always give you the, the most recent breaking news when it comes to Black Mafia family and all organized crime in America, whether we're talking about African-Americans, Italians, bikers, Irish, Jewish. We're here giving you the 411, uncovering the underworld here at OG Pod and Gangster Report. For Benny Behind the Glass, I'm Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, out.